The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jessie, travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you Brother Ford. They won't break up the fallow ground of their hearts, and after they do this, they sow it with mingled seed into the rich soil of their heart by allowing other things to enter their soul. Did you catch it? The soul is the filter, it's the gate. I told them to guard their heart, but they don't. Therefore, the enemy dumps, uh, dupes them into sowing tares and weeds along with the word and many times this prolongs or postpones their harvest. Wow. That's what I call self-sabotage. So when a farmer desires a harvest of corn, he will saturate his field with corn seed. Did you hear that? and nothing else. You said you desire a harvest of healing. What you're saturating your mind with? Because you got to get in your mind before it get in your spirit. So if you, you said you desire, amen, a harvest. You say you, you've been you've been deaf in one ear and the doctors and told you that's full. They can go and you got the best hearing aid they make and it, it costs more than your car and you still can't hear nothing. But you read the Bible and it says he healed them all. You read the Bible and it says with his stripes you are healed. So then the preacher said healing belongs to you and you say I want it. Because the doctors have told me ain't nothing they can do now, see. But the problem is they didn't happen in two weeks. See, we think mind saturation is cutting the TV off for 10 days. It ain't do you no good. You stayed on the, on the phone, on the computer. You might, well keep, you might well keep your TV on. You ain't, you ain't saturating your mind with the word. You so a mingle seed. And it depends on what kind of Christian stuff you listen to. The guy come on first, tell you healing is yours. The next one tell you healing passed away. You confused again. God don't heal everybody. It ain't his will to heal everybody. And then here the devil saying, you want them, it ain't his will to heal. See, you've been listening to mingle seed. He saturates his field and he don't put nothing else in it. Uh -huh. cool. and, but my people are unwilling to saturate their hearts with my word in the area they need the manifestation. Mostly because it requires them to totally saturate their minds with my word. They have, watch this, too many secular things that they are addicted to. See, we just think addiction is just drugs and lust and pornography. He said, no, you got some secular stuff. See, how many know he didn't say sinful stuff? There's some folk that's addicted to the golf course. They just can't pass it up. God said, I want you to fast. Okay, I'm going to fast and play. I'm going to fast. I'm going to we'll see if I get my 18 holes in. No, you don't understand how many know to play golf. It takes mental concentration. So you might be fasting, but you are not focused on the word. You are not praying. Oh, you, you might pray that you make this putt. But that, <laughs> you praying to get a hole in one, but you, yeah, you got it. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They got too many secular things that they are addicted to. He used the word addicted. He said, and these secular addictions mean more to them than the healing, the wealth, the wisdom, the joy, etc. that my word promises. And they say they want and need in their lives. See, I believe the reason the Lord used the word addiction because addictions don't just drop off easy. Huh? You, you, they got to be what? Broken. It takes a serious, determined, focused, concentrated effort to break it. But see, here's the deal. Because it ain't sin, sometimes we don't see no need to break it. Well, you, you try to say, can't have no phone because I'm saying. No, no, no. We're talking about a period of time for you to get what matters the most to you. But evidently, golf matters more than your healing. Golf matters more than you having the wisdom of golf or whatever your, your addiction is. 
Their mind is not single. Their eye is not single. Therefore, their heart is cluttered. Let me read that one again. Their mind is not single. Their eye is not single. Therefore, their heart is cluttered. We look at that and think about too many other things other than the, the one thing that I need. Y'all absorbing this tonight. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. And the word that brought them the hope, the expectation, the desire, the anticipation from the beginning is soon choked out and becomes unfruitful in their heart. Remember I said when the lust of other things enter in. Okay, we better, we, I can't take that for granted. Let's go to Mark. Y'all still waiting on me and Mark anyway, ain't you? Mark chapter 4. Let's go on down. Well, I, just, I read on down. And these are they which are sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, what do they do? Immediately they receive it with what? Gladness. Them just shouting on that word. And have no root in themselves. But so endure, but for a time. I'm going to say a little time. Afterward, when affliction, pressure, persecution arrive, simply for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown. Here we go. Here we go among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And what's that next word? The lust, the desire, the expectation, the anticipation, the craving, the want of other things. What's the next word? Notice is a, the action verb is in the present continual sense, entering in. Don't say it enter. It's, a pro, it's progressively Entering in. In other words, it's coming in on a regular basis like the word should be. See, the word just got sown in there. But instead of the word coming in daily, hourly, three times a day, four times a day, the desires of other things are coming in on a regular, consistent, constant basis. And it choked the word and it, the word becometh unfruitful. If the word has to become unfruitful, that means the word was about to be fruitful, was at one point. In other words, first the blade, then the ear. Before you got to the full coin in the ear, other things took your meditation, took your attention, took your concentration, took your focus and got you distracted. These things entering in on a consistent basis that chokes the word, which was the original seed sown in their hearts, but broken focus opens the door and allows other things to come in and eventually choke the word. And I just showed you, and notice it says the lust, the desire, which equals expectation of other things entering in. So I told you to pay attention to the fact that the action verb is in the present continuous sense. So after the seed of the word is sown in the necessary process of meditation, which is the key to mental saturation, is disrupted by the lust of other things entering in. Now, even though he said he sowed it among thorns, that tell me that these other things were not uh, in, a, in the heart in a major way. Meaning, you know, you, you kind of had this desire, you know, it's been there, but it's laid dormant. But once the word gets in there, then the enemy starts fanning the fire of other desires. They start rising up. That's why I say the, the, the lust, the, the longing, the expectation, the desire, the anticipation for these things entering in. It, it, it begins to be fueled more than the word. Remember he said, why did the word with the words of your mouth? But now are you talking about that new car? Oh, you talking about is that, I'm going to give me some more clothes. Oh, girl, this, this, uh, I'm just going to, matter of fact, I'm going to make myself buy some new clothes. I'm going to give all my clothes away and I'm going to have to go shopping. You got your mind set on something that wasn't even important until you started going after what really meant something to you. And then it's, oh, I can't, I, can't let, I can't let that word produce in the heart like that. So, so that tell me that uh, these, these desires were not present when the word was sown like that. So they come after the word was sown because the guard was not on the heart. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. And when we don't guard our heart, into it flow distractions. Mm -hmm. So watch this, now the farmer, in the natural, he patrols his field to keep the thing that he did not sow out of it. Yeah, if I'm be riding by, he on weed patrol. He sees some weed, pest, oh, he's going to get some weed control. Bug show up, pesticide coming. He got to get these pests up out of here. Joel talks about the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, eating up your stuff. See, so the real farmer in the natural, he said, I ain't going to let this happen. No, I got to protect my field because I planted corn because I wanted what? 
corn. And I don't want no weeds, and I don't want nothing eating up my corn. So, so let's go to Matthew 6, because he talked about, amen, this desire here. So look at Matthew chapter 6. See, when, when we, when we I, I, I want the wisdom of God. The Bible says I can have the mind of Christ, I want it. Okay, you say that, but are you meditating on the word? How many, when the last time you read through the four gospels to see, to get a look at Christ? Man, a friend of mine told me, God told him to think like a millionaire. I said, how many do you know? Oh, uh, well, I said, no, you ain't going to think like a millionaire hanging around with folk on welfare. No, you're not. I don't care what you say. You might think above them, the welfare mindset, but you ain't thinking like a millionaire. If you ain't rolling with a millionaire, you don't know how a millionaire think. Have you talked to one lately? Have you listened to one yet? That's what he said. He said, hmm. I said, so if God told you that, another man of God I know said God told him, uh, he wanted him to start thinking like a millionaire. He said the first thing he did was found some and started hanging around them. He said, I'd go to dinner with them. He said, I'd buy my own lunch. I wouldn't let them buy it. I just wanted to hear them talk. I didn't want to be in their presence, see how they act. Matthew 6, 27, since, since, since y'all follow me now. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit under his stature? And why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now that's, that's a bodacious statement right there. Solomon was dressed so fine the queen fell out. And, and talked about the men around him with the way they was dressed. She said she, first thing the girl noticed was the sitting of his servants and their attire. She said, man, he fuck around you to hit your wisdom. They happy. And God said, I, I dressed the lilies outdoors better than Solomon was dressed. Some of y'all said, I, I just want Solomon clothes. I'll be all right. <laughs> Wherefore, if God, if who? God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he, God, not much more clothe you? I hear that, but I don't, I don't know. I, ain't, I better catch this sale. I don't know what God going to clothe me or not. I think it's the Lord showed me that sale was on. O ye of what? Little faith. Therefore, take no thought. Say it like this. Say it like this. Therefore, receive no thought. If I got to take the thought, the thought must be being offered to me. So then that means it's not my thought. It wasn't mine. That thought, if it said the thought came to me, where it come from? See, the thought just came. Okay, the thought just came. What you take it for? Wasn't your thought. It came. Oh, no, that'd be like, I ring your doorbell. Who is it? Uh, UPS. I ain't order nothing. I know, but I got a tub full of rattlesnakes here for you. I just leave them on the door. You ain't even got a sign for them. Well, I ain't order them, but since they free, <laughs> that's, that's that mindset. That's that mindset. It's free? I, 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 I can probably sell them. I can probably sell them to some of them snakes. I know the zoo probably will buy them. Yeah, when you set the cage down and they get out. <laughs> take no thought, saying. How do we take the thought? By saying. What makes us receive the thought? By saying. You know this thought, shh, you on the phone. You know, I was just sitting around thinking. I know, I know it's a devil, but let me tell you what I was thinking. You wasn't thinking that. The thought was being presented, and you're supposed to reject it. If you don't say it, you don't receive it. You cast it down by saying what God said, not uttering the thought. Once you utter the thought, it becomes yours. You took it. You ever been sitting around and you just, uh, the other day I stepped into a room where a young man was mixing concrete and it was, you know, all that dust was in there. And I, you know, obviously I was breathing when I walked in there. I said something to him and boy, for the next day, it might seem like there was something sitting right here on my tonsil. Now, how many thoughts do you think that have been through my mind in two days? You, you can't be saying that stuff. You just got to stay with the word. There ain't number concrete dust. Don't, no, don't be trying to, but the devil, gonna, I, I, you know, it could be. That just probably agitated something. It's probably. Well, you know, the TV just told you it's the flu season. You know, your throat, that's one of the symptoms of the flu. I don't do flu. But when you start thinking, girl, you know, I'm going to stay in because I don't want to catch no flu. And if I got a couple of symptoms, who told you you had some symptoms? When you went to the doctor? No, you, 
You take it. I'm just trying to show you how easy it is to be duped, to take a thought. And you start saying stuff because it seems innocent, but it's a trap. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father know that you have what? Need of all these things. And see, the need of all these things will make you compromise your stand. Because you will start saying, well, Lord, I know what you said, but I need this and I need that. And I, I got to have this. And Lord, you know I got to have this. But seek ye what? Okay, then didn't Hosea just tell us, break up your fallow ground for this time to seek the Lord until he come and rain righteousness upon you? You see, the seed sown is the evidence of your expectation, your anticipation. So he said here, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and all these things that you need to be added. You ain't even asked. You are seeking God, and when you start, look at Solomon. Solomon didn't ask none of that other stuff. He asked for the wisdom of God to fulfill his assignment, and God said, I'm going to give you that plus. So God is telling you, if you're going to break up your fallow ground, and you get single-minded, and you see the devil going to dupe you now. You, you, you've been praying about receiving the wisdom of God for three weeks. You know you ain't prayed about this, and you ain't, you ain't asked God about Junior. You know Junior need prayer now. You can't be, no, God got that. The devil telling you to take a thought. Why? Like last night, God said for seven days, praise him for your children. And don't be trying to make decrees and confession. He just said praise him. And you know, today when I was praising him, all of a sudden here come these. I said, shut up. I'm trying to decrees. Now, ain't nothing wrong with the decree except God said for seven days, praise. See, I'm just trying to tell you a simple instruction is going to be fought by the enemy, but you got to stay focused enough to do what he said. All these things shall be what? Added unto you. Look at Romans 5 and 5. Let me read the rest of this while you find that. It says now he uses pesticide to kill the insect that would destroy the crop if it was left alone. You cannot leave your mind open to the enemy just to flood you with crazy thoughts. Why is he so diligent? He is diligent because his expectancy of a crop demands that he take responsibility of the welfare of that crop. And if your expectation is to receive the wisdom of God, you can't be listening to foolishness. It seems like soon as you start setting your mind to get the wisdom of God, somebody will bring you by a bunch of Three Stooges videos. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I think you'll enjoy these. This is old school, you know, back in your day. You know, Larry Moe and Curly Joe, you, you know. And now you done got your mind off the word and you watching, you laughing. You know, they bring you some Jonathan Slocum. Laugh yourself to life. And you just as happy and still ignorant. Because you was trying to get some wisdom. Now you got over here is this superficial joy. No, I'm just trying to show you how subtle and how quick. They say you come immediately for the word's sake. For a distraction. And you can take it any way you want to take it. You can take it. See, because I, I know y'all. Y'all receive it better if I ain't talking about money, even though you're broke. You're quiet, you're quiet and sad. You, you know, you don't talk about money. You know you need some more. You, you know you do. But watch this. Let me read that again. He, why is the farmer so diligent to get the weed killer, to get the pesticide? He is diligent because his desire for his crop, he realizes his expectation of a harvest demands that he take responsibility for the welfare of the crop because he understands first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, then it's going to be time to reap what I've been waiting on all this time, what I've been expecting, what I sold for. I sold with great anticipation and too many in the body of Christ have lost their hope. They, they, that's why they don't study long. They meditate on the word. It looks like I just don't get no revelation like them other folks. I'm just, let me just go Google something. Watch this now. He knows his responsibility. He got to see until it becomes his harvest. So he, the harvest that he's expecting. So remember, he sowed to his desire. Remember, he sowed to his expectation. He sold for what he wanted. So, his, his anticipation of his seed coming to fruition captivates his attention. It becomes his meditation and his conversation and his uh, actions are centered around his expectation of a harvest. So, he begins to prepare himself to reap and to market his corn. And see, Romans 5 and 5 says, and hope 
expectation, anticipation, expectation, what? Hello, praise the Lord. This is Prophet Ford. Listen, I want to invite you to meet me right here, 9101 Lou Drive in the city of Little Rock, one night only, January 28th. That's right, Sunday night, January 28th, right here, 6.30 p.m. We'll be here in an old-fashioned book of Acts, power-packed, Holy Ghost deliverance service, and I want you to be my special guest. Bring a friend, share a miracle. You don't want to miss it. First Sunday night deliverance service of the year, and God's going to be moving by his power. This is a tremendous year. It's a year of an outpouring, a year of the Holy Ghost and fire, a year of increase, and you need all of that. So just make a decision. You're going to bring a neighbor and share a miracle. Meet us right here, 6.30 p.m., 9101 Lou Drive in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm looking to see you here. Make them not ashamed. See, when you got that hope, that anticipation, faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. The evidence of things what? Not seen. And we don't show enough word in our heart to get the faith up. And if we don't get our faith up, we can't reap because we reap by faith. The promises of God are received by faith. So watch this. So he only sowed one type of seed. So there is no wavering on his part about what he's going to reap. And he has a time frame in mind. He knew when he planted in March on my corn now, he would reap in August. So if it does not rain enough during the summer months, he's going to irrigate. In other words, he's going to run something. Now we ain't talking about no water hole, just a whole field. He got to go down to the river. In other words, he got to put some due diligent effort to get this irrigation system going, to get the water to the root of that corn, because he know if, it, if, if the conditions change to the worst, I could lose my crop. But he's taking responsibility. And see, we don't take the responsibility to stay in the word till faith comes in our heart. We start, oh my God, we do start. You did run well. Who did hinder you? You got off to a good start, but you don't finish. And we got to make a decision. I'm going all the way by faith. I'm not fainting. I ain't caving in. I ain't giving up. I'm not going to quit. And just because the brook dried up, I ain't leaving. I'm waiting on my next instruction. Elijah did not leave because the brook dried up. He left because the word of the Lord came and said, get thee down to Zarephath. I commanded a widow woman there. In other words, that's you got to get to your, he said, Elijah, it ain't going to rain for three years. He said, go down to the brook Cherub. I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So that brook was his their place for that first year and a half of that famine. And that really two years when you look at it in history. Then he had to get up and walk to Zarephath in a famine. It ain't rain. How many know that's a dusty road? It ain't rain. In, in two years, yes, yeah, but Lord, you know, that's a long walk. But if you sit here, you're going to die. Now get up and go to Zarephath. What happened? He's being led by the Spirit of God. He, the brook was dry, but a dry brook is not the reason to relocate. The only reason to relocate is the same reason you're in that location. God said it. When you get an instruction from God, don't override it. God, we put stuff in our heart and we, be, we feel it, but we're going to make it work. Okay. Go ahead. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. But you're going to make it work? I hear folks, I'm going to make something happen. Really? Go ahead. I don't know what that something going to be, but if God tell you, you know exactly what's going to happen. So he's going to irrigate. Why? Because he's focused on his harvest. Look at 2 Corinthians 9. See, when you get focused on your harvest, then you're going to, you're going to, your, your, everything gravitates toward the consummation of it to make sure it happens. You know, I was raised in a farming community. My grandma uh, had a large garden, and, 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 and I worked for farmers that had fields. I'm talking about acres, you know, planted cotton and, and planted rice and soya beans. And, and I watched that diligence, and I watched them, amen, how they would, how they acted during planting season. I watched them, amen, plow in the cold to break up the fields to get them ready, amen, because there's some things you plant in October, and they, they had to plant them in October for them to be ready in March and April, and they would get out there and do what they want to do while we were out talking about trick-or-treat. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. That's what we started with, right? Every man, according as he what? Purpose in his heart, so let him give. What's the purpose of your heart? What's in your heart? See, this, this is where you start at with the heart motivation. 
Look at Galatians 6 and 7. See, when you purpose in your heart, then he said, let him do what's in his heart. If your heart stays tied with it, too many of us are doing stuff without. Listen, beloved. It's Prophet Leonard Ford. I'm asking you to join us in partnership. We're believing God for new partners so we can expand. I've got uh, doors of opportunity waiting for me on the mission field. And so I need you to uphold my hand. I need you to send me. You may not want to go into Africa, but you can send me. So I'm asking you to partner with us. We're believing God for those that will partner with us at $41 a month. But don't let that stop you. Amen. God may be speaking to you about more than that. Or he may be speaking to you about less than that. The key is hear God. God and commit. We're talking about partnership. I'm not talking about a one-time gift now. Now I'm talking about entering into a partnership and covenant. Amen. So you can partake of this anointing and this grace that's upon our life and on this ministry and the good things that God is doing for us. The confirmation of the gospel can begin to manifest in your life. Amen. So pray about it. Send your partnership seed. Now if you'll mark partnership on that seed when it comes in, we'll get the partner package back out to you. You'll find out what our commitment is to you. Yeah, we make commitments to you and what we our expectation of you is because this connection is more than monetary. We're talking about covenant partnership and there's a transition and impartation that comes with partnership. And so you need to be a partaker of it. When you stop and look at the great apostle Paul, he did the things that he did because of his partnership. Have you ever thought about, hey amen, they didn't travel like we travel? I mean, they, they, they couldn't jump on the jet and fly to the next place. They couldn't jump in the van and run to the next place. They went by ship many times. You know, Paul was on his way to Rome to go to prison and got shipwrecked and wound up on Melita, stayed there a while. It was about six years before he got there. And then when he got there, the Bible said he was in his own hired house. Now tell me how a man in prison can hire a house. His partner sent him to parchment. They were there, and he was able to reach that place because partners were supporting him. So I want you to know, we believe in partnership. We believe in the the the, uh, the, the reciprocity that comes with it. Amen. There's an impartation of anointing and grace and gifting that comes in your life that comes no other way. So pray about it. Make that commitment. And like I said, on your first seat, put partnership on the memo, and we will correspond with you. God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.